What's up, Wallow Monkeys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've got six reasons why I think checking accounts suck. But before I go into those six, why don't you comment below on why you don't like checking accounts? Let's start there. Well, first off, I got Chase pulled up here. It's not because they suck. I actually think Chase is on the better side of, of this, meaning that like when things do go wrong, they're more willing to work with you. With your personal checking account, and especially with business, I only have business to them, I don't have personal. And uh, there's been situations that have happened and things processed faster, slower than this, and, and they, you know, they helped out, right? So anyways, number one is monthly fees. Why do we have to, and, and Chase is guilty of this on the business side, I don't know about on the personal side, why do we have to, yeah, here it is right here. Monthly service fees, $12, $0, $4.95, $25 or to zero. Why do we have to pay a monthly service fee? That is absolutely ridiculous. I'm paying you a fee to hold my money, but by me having my money in a checking account, it's dead money. I'm not earning anything off of it. I'm not, you know, compounding anything. Nothing's occurring. It's literally dead, stale, stagnant money, and you're making me pay for it. That's crazy. What's up, Wallet Monkeys? I hope you're enjoying that content. I wanted to take a quick minute and just explain a couple ways that you could get more access to us. So first things first is uh, if you've been watching us for a while and uh, you've been getting value from the content, just take a second, like, and subscribe, maybe comment below. Algorithmically, this stuff helps a lot, so thank you for that. And if you want access to exclusive members-only content, meaning videos and posts, then you're gonna click that little join button underneath, and I think it's five bucks a month, and that'll give you access to that. If you want beyond that and to join our private community, we have a private Discord community and you can get the link underneath this video in the description you'll get access to dozens of channels talking about personal credit business credit entrepreneurialism side hustles real estate and everything in between as well as get access to I think four different training courses so that's it thank you so much for your support and now back to the video two when um, payments start processing out they get stuck and that takes away from your total balance so like let's say for example somebody makes a mistake I actually just had this happen on the credit card side is they took four pending transactions of $250 on one of my cards well just imagine if that was your regular checking account well you'd have zero or you'd be negative and they might start processing non-sufficient funds fees on you but none of that really matters because the money that you probably need to pay your bills to live off of you no longer have now so that to me is just absolutely ridiculous number three speaking of overdraft fees is overdraft fees non-sufficient fund fees I don't know when this actually first came out but I've got stories all the way back to a bank called TCF Bank which I don't even think exists anymore and uh, and it was wild what happened with them they actually were caught for moving around transactions to get higher transactions to process first to actually force and trigger non-sufficient funds fees and they made billions of dollars doing this I know the banks collectively make billions of dollars doing this with NSF overdraft fees and then extended overdraft fees because they can now if you leave it sitting for like a week or two now they can charge even more and then all of that actually gets um, reported to your uh, your check systems if you never pay that off by the way so you, you need to make sure even if you don't want to do that or hate that that it happened to you you got to pay it because they'll report you to check systems and then you'll never be able to get a personal checking or a business checking with your name on it so non-sufficient funds fees are absolutely ridiculous I know that banks have been caught for for using it and abusing it now um, but the fact that they're even there, like they should not exist at all. It was just another vehicle that banks use to try and figure out a way to make more money off of accounts, just like the uh, monthly service fee. Number four, no fraud protection. I'm gonna actually insert an example really quick, speaking about Chase. There was an example that happened where somebody was skimming uh, Chase ATM uh, data and actually pulling money off of people's debit cards and uh, Chase, like outside of this video going viral, Chase was gonna do nothing about it. I'll insert the video now. Bonjourno shows how she got scammed at this ATM. I went up to go use the machine on the right. I inserted my card. Okay, so having no fraud protection, that's a huge issue. But number five is disputes. Disputes are extremely hard with a regular checking account. Now, what I don't understand is it's basically the same thing as a credit card, right? So a transaction happened and I wanna dispute it. Maybe it's fraud, maybe it's not. I don't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, like, who cares? I have this transaction, I want to dispute. On the checking side, it's like they're dragging their feet to get you the paperwork. They don't even really care if they even offer or allow you to dispute a transaction. They, a lot of times, won't even allow you to dispute on a regular checking account. You can only do that in credit products at some institutions. So if they even offer it, they're dragging their feet. They don't really care, right? We gotta jump through all this hoopla. And then at the end of the day, 
the likelihood of us actually winning the dispute is very, very low. Um, like I'll give an example with uh, Navy Fed, actually, their dispute process on the, on the checking account side is really, really bad. Had a legitimate um, dispute that we had proof that the transaction, the uh, service had never been fulfilled, and it was a $3,000 service, by the way, and they did not care. We lost back to back when we had all the proof and evidence of what happened with uh, essentially a fraudulent um, transaction. They did not care. We did, get, we did not get our money back, and that was just lost money, like, oh, well. So again, like disputes, frauds. It's all weird that they just don't care on the checking side, but if we now move this over to the credit card side, they all of a sudden care so much. Very strange. Lastly, and tying back into the first point is number six, and that is that there's barely any cash back. I think they max out on the checking account side at like 2%. That's like a regular everyday credit card. So why are we even using this? Why are we bothering? And it goes back to point number one, which is that it's it's essentially dead money sitting there. Like we're, we're not making anything off of it. It's not doing anything. And then as you know, transactions are hitting our account, we're actually putting ourselves at risk to go negative, to get overdraft fees, non-sufficient funds fees, et cetera. Like none of it actually makes sense if you logically sit down and look at it. So what's a better solution? Well, my solution and is something that we talk about on the channel all the time is substitute in how you treat your debit card and paying all your bills off of that and do that with a charge card. Uh, what I mean by that is treat the charge card like the debit card and at the end of the month pay it the same way that you pay on the debit card side. So we don't have to worry about all that. We get uh, superior fraud protection, we get ID theft protection, we get dispute capabilities and we get all these other things and we're not paying a monthly fee as well. So that's what I suggest and we've talked about that before on the channel is that you want to be really running uh, at least one or two or five or 10 to hit spend minimums. You wanna be running you know, purchases through your credit cards through, throughout the month and then at the end of the month just pay it off. So it's it's not free money. It's not running two things parallel side by side and this is my money and this is the bank's money and I run up this one and I leave all my checking account money sitting there. No, we don't do that because I've seen that happen. So we just treat the, the charge card or credit card like the debit card and then at the end of the month, we, t we pull from the debit card, pay off the credit card and that's it, right? Makes sense? So anyways, I'd love to hear in the comments below if you haven't commented already, what is your number one gripe with, uh, with checking accounts? What do you hate about checking accounts? What is it? Share in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet. Right there. Okay, bye.